hello all welcome back to my channel i am sonia musakutti and today i will be continuing the topic space infections so in the last video we discussed about the primary maxillary space infections now we can talk about the mandibular space infection the potential primary spaces related to mandible include submandibular space submandibular space and sublingual space i will be dealing with some of the important secondary spaces like parotid space tergo mandibular space and submesentric space also so first we will go through the submandibular space the etiology of the submandibular space infection is most frequently involved by the infections originating from the six anterior mandibular teeth the clinical features are both extra oral and intra oral for the submandibular space infection the extra oral findings include distant firm swelling in the midline beneath the skin the skin overlying the swelling is broad like and taut fluctuation may be also present the intraoral findings include the offending teeth are either non vital fractured or carious they also exhibit tender on percussion and show mobility the patient may experience discomfort on swallowing now we can discuss the boundaries of submental space The boundaries include superior boundary, inferior boundary and lateral boundary. Superiorly, the submandibular space is bounded by the mylohyoid muscle. Inferiorly, by the deep cervical fascia, platysma, superficial fascia and skin. Laterally, by the anterior belly of digastric muscle. The management of any space infection as I told is incision and drainage. So, The management of submandibular space infection is also incision and drainage and it is performed by making a transverse incision in the skin below the symphysis of the mandible. Next we can go for the submandibular space. The submandibular space lies between the anterior and the posterior bellies of digastric muscle. The etiology of the submandibular space infection is having five points. These include the infection which are originating from the mandibular molars the infection from the submandibular salivary glands the infection from the middle third of the tongue and posterior part of the floor of the mouth cheeks etc extension of the infection from the submandibular space and the extension of the infection from the posterior part of the sublingual space now we can go for the clinical features of submandibular space infection These include both extra oral and intra oral findings. The extra oral symptoms include firm swelling in the submandibular region below the inferior border of the mandible, generalized constitutional symptoms, redness of the overlying skin. The intra oral findings include the teeth are sensitive to percussion, the offending teeth are mobile, there is moderate crispness and there is dysphagia. The boundaries of the submandibular space include superior, inferior, anterior, posterior, medial and lateral boundaries. Superiorly, the submandibular space is bounded by the mylohyoid muscle and the inferior border of the mandible. Inferiorly, by the anterior and the posterior belly of digastric muscle. Medially, by the hypoglossus muscle, styloglossus muscle and the mylohyoid muscle. laterally by the deep cervical fascia platysma superficial fascia and skin anteriorly by the submandibular space and posteriorly by the hyoid bone the management of submandibular space infection include incision and drainage the incision is about 1.5 to 2 cm which is made 2 cm below the lower border of the mandible next mandibular space is the sublingual space It is a V-shaped trough lying lateral to the muscles of tongue including hyoglossus muscle, genioglossus muscle and geniohyoid muscle. The etiology of the sublingual space infection include infections involving the mandibular incisors, canines, premolars and sometimes the first molar. The clinical feature of the sublingual space infection is having both extra oral and intra oral findings which is similar to the other space infections the extra oral findings include there is no swelling extra orally visible then there is enlarged or tender lymph nodes the pain and discomfort is seen on deglutition 
the speech may be affected the intraoral findings include firm painful swelling which is seen in the floor of the mouth on the affected side the floor of the mouth is raised tongue is pushed superiorly causing airway obstruction there is inability to protrude the tongue beyond the vermilion border of the upper lip now we can go for the boundaries of the sublingual space the boundaries include superior boundary inferior boundary medial lateral and posterior superiorly the sublingual space is bounded by the mucosa of the floor of the mouth inferiorly by the mylohyoid muscle medially by the hyoglossus genioglossus and geniohyoid muscles laterally by the medial side of the mandible above the mylohyoid muscle and posteriorly by the hyoid bone the management for the sublingual space infection is incision and drainage it can be done intraorally and extraorally extraorally when both the submental and sublingual spaces contain the pus they can be drained via a skin incision placed in the submental region so that comes to an end to the primary mandibular spaces next we can go to the secondary potential facial spaces as i told which include the temporal space parotid space pterygo mandibular space etc first we will go through the most important secondary facial space that is the pterygo mandibular space the infection to the pterygo mandibular space is commonly due to infected mandibular third molar spread from the pericoronitis or infected needle during the INB technique the clinical features for the pterygo mandibular space infection include severe trismus difficulty in swallowing there is anterior bulging of the half of the soft palate and the tonsillar pillars with deviation of the uvula to the unaffected side An important point here is that there is absence of extra oral swelling in case of pterygo mandibular space infection. Now, the boundaries of the pterygo mandibular space. The boundaries include anterior, posterior, superior, medial and lateral. Anteriorly, the pterygo mandibular space is bounded by pterygo mandibular raphe. Posteriorly, by the parotid gland. medially by the lateral surface of the medial pterygoid muscle laterally by the medial surface of the ramus of the mandible superiorly by the lateral pterygoid muscle the management for the pterygo mandibular space infection include incision and drainage it can be done both intraorally and extraorally intraorally a vertical incision approximately of 1.5 cm in length is made on the anterior and medial aspect of the ramus of the mandible extraorally an incision is taken in the skin below the angle of the mandible so the next secondary space is a submesentric space when the pus accumulates between the ramus of the mandible and the masseter muscle it produces a submesentric space abscess The etiology include infection which originates from the lower third molars or pericoronitis. The clinical features include there is external facial swelling which is moderate in size and it is confined to the outline of the masseter muscle. There is tenderness over the angle of the mandible and there is almost complete limitation of the mouth opening. There may be pyrexia and malaise too. The boundaries of the submesentric space include anterior posterior medial lateral and inferior anteriorly the submesentric space is bounded by the anterior border of the masseter muscle and the buccinator posteriorly by the parotid gland and posterior part of the masseter medially by the lateral surface of the ramus of the mandible laterally by the medial surface of the masseter muscle inferiorly it is attachment of the masseter to the lower border of the mandible So that comes to an end of our facial space infections and there are other secondary space infections too but the discussed ones are the most clinically relevant ones so i hope all of you like my video thank you